now call the meeting to order. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the United States of America. And she gave me a public for what you see and one thing she learned about indivisible liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the February Board of Supervisors meeting. Uh, just a quick reminder that our meeting is being recorded and will be posted to YouTube in a couple of days or tomorrow, tomorrow. Um, and it's being held hybrid. So there are people joining us from home. So uh, the first thing on the agenda is approving the minutes of January 17th and February 6th. I have a motion to approve the minutes of January 17th and February 6th, 2023. I'll second. Any comments or questions from the board? Yeah. Any comments or questions from the public? All in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Reports. First up is the police report. Chief Alexander. Well, thank you and good evening. For the month of January 2023, the Euclid Township Police Department officers documented 1,213 entries in the Police Department call reporting system. During the reporting period, the officers issued 158 traffic citations. They investigated 28 motor vehicle crashes and they arrested 12 individuals. Additionally, for the month of January, the department members conducted one motor carrier detail at the weigh station, resulting in 328 commercial motor vehicles being weighed, uh, none of which were found to be overweight. Four commercial vehicle inspections were performed, which resulted in one vehicle being placed out of service. Uh, additionally, during the reporting period, Officer Scott also performed one additional inspection during his normal work days. Thank you, Chief Alexander. Next up, Treasurer. Uh, good evening. Um, for the month of January in the general fund, we have collected just a little over 5% of our budgeted revenues and have spent just a little over seven, almost seven and a half percent of our budgeted expenditures. Okay. Thank you, Sue. Public Works. For the month of January, the daily average flow to the downtown treatment plant was. That is not the right notes for this month. Um, I'll, I'll just. Uh, Stay away from the specifics for this. We'll follow up for the next month. But um, the Public Works Department was out on 113 and 100 replacing signs during the months of, month of January. Uh, they were also out on Dallin Forge Road and Peck Road replacing signs. Um, we've been out repairing potholes as quick as we can. This is pothole season, and it's always fun to try and keep up with those. Um, one of the things, I, this is actually good, because one of the things I did want to talk about slightly related to Public Works um, is the line, the Tetracoma Senior Park. Um, you may have noticed that at, at LA Park, Lionville Park, um, ground has been broken on that park. And we've been trying to get the word out as to what exactly is going on there, but I wanted to show the site plan real quick for the board and for the people in, in the audience today. Um, the township is proposing two bocce ball courts as well as two pickleball courts. And the park itself is actually ringed with workout equipment. And um, this is senior specific park. It's for old, our older uh, residents. Um, and it's named after Ted Jacomas, who was our former um, engineer. So looking forward to that breaking. We're hoping uh, that should wrap up around June for uh, official opening. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention this evening was uh, and kind of apologizing for the confusion with Eagle Disposal. The township had been notified that there was going to be a name change. We have since found out that that's not actually occurring. It will continue to be Eagle Disposal. Um, so moving forward, you will, if nothing will change as far as uh, trash pickup. And then finally, I did want to mention that the Acker Park Basin Retrofit Project is also under construction or will be going under construction um, starting February 21st. There should be no real impact to the park itself. It will be open. However, there will obviously be construction equipment coming in and out of Bellin. So uh, that project's expected to take about three to four weeks and should be should be open by maybe the end of March, early April. 
Great. Thank you, Scott. I have a uh, one, one question. I, I know we had some discussions with uh, PennDOT regarding Peck Road. Right. So uh, the township has been in discussions with PennDOT regarding Peck Road, the intersection of 113 Peck Road. Um, we are working with PennDOT to address some signal issues there to try and make the intersection safer. Um, this will kind of entail looking at the, the left hand turn there, but um, we are still working with PennDOT. We hope to have a, a final answer there. Um, but as many know, there's been several several accidents in that at that intersection over the last um, five years. So we're working to make that um, safer with PennDOT. Thank you. Okay, uh, that's it for Public Works. Next up is Fire Marshal. Uh, yes, for the month of January, uh, the building department issued 57 permits for construction activities. Uh, a total of 88 inspections were conducted. A total of 22 fire code inspections were conducted. 35 use and occupancy certificates were issued. And the fire marshal responded to 22 incidents during working hours. Okay, thank you. Lionville Fire Company. Ryan with Fire Company responded to uh, 53 incidents during the month of January. The municipality breakdown is 29 in Euclid, 11 in Upper Euclid, 8 in West Pikeland, and 5 in other municipalities. That brings our, our year-to-date total to 53. Also want to make a note that the uh, Pennsylvania State Fire Commissioner recently recognized the fire company for achieving 100% participation as part of the fire service certification program. This signifies that all active members have achieved certification as nationally recognized firefighter one status or greater. The Lionville Fire Company is one of just 31 fire departments in the state of Pennsylvania to achieve this, and one of three in Chester County that have been recognized to this level. Wow, that's awesome. Congratulations, thank and thank you very much. Uh, Euclid Ambulance. Um. For the month of January, there was a total of 434 calls, 138 of them were in Euclid. Okay, thank you. Can I get a motion to approve the reports? So moved. Second. Any comments or questions from the board? Any comments or questions from the public? All in favor? Aye. 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 The ayes have it. Business. Uh, the first item of business is life-saving recognition. Chief Alexander? Well, thank you. Uh, good evening again. I appreciate everybody for coming out this evening uh, while we hold this recognition ceremony. I thought I would just share a quick story with you before we begin. Um, I do a fair amount of public speaking, and a lot of times the public speaking may not be um, something that I really have to prepare for. It can be very uh, topic specific at a meeting, uh, at the station, uh, various groups that I'm involved with and, and uh, committees that I sit on. And uh, I, I, as I said, I normally don't have to do a lot of preparing, but when I know that I'm gonna be speaking about a topic and I have days or weeks ahead of time to prepare, I sort of have a process that I go through. And uh, the process generally involves me changing whatever it is that I'm gonna say 15 or 20 times. I write notes to myself. I try to work things out in my, in my head so that I can speak competently when, when I'm out uh, doing something. And I was having a lot of difficulty today. I had changed my speech probably 20 times at this point. And I spoke with Scott Greenlee about it and I was gonna head home and sit at my house quietly and try to gather my thoughts so that I would be able to speak with all of you tonight. So I went home and I have a 15 year old who plays electric guitar and the entire house was just filled with electric guitar music. And I was going completely crazy trying to gather any sense of what it was that I thought I might say tonight. So I got up from the table probably two or three times and I was going to ask him not to play the electric guitar anymore, but then I tried to be a better parent than that and allow him to just continue on as he was playing uh, various songs from Led Zeppelin and, and every other band that you may imagine. He's a, a big fan of, uh, of the early rock bands. 
So at some point I went into his room and I said, buddy, you know, what, what was that that you were just playing? Was, was that Led Zeppelin? Oh, no, dad, what, what are you talking about? That was Van Halen. And I said, okay, I'm sorry, you're right, it was Van Halen. But what about the other song? Was that Led Zeppelin? No, dad, it was, um, it was Round and Round by Rat. And I said, okay, I'm sorry. And with that, I walked away. I thought, okay, well, I'm just going to stop at this point. So I got ready and I was on my way here and I went to his room again and he was still playing and I tried to re-engage him and be, you know, cool father and know all the songs that he was playing of which I didn't know any of them. And, and again, I, I was thought we were talking about Van Halen when we were really talking about Rhett and vice versa. And I finally just gave up and I told him I loved him and said I had to get back to work. And uh, I went down the hallway of our house and he called out to me and he said, hey, dad. And I said, uh, I said, oh, he's probably going to tell me to have a good night or, you know, that he loves me as well. And he turned around and I said, yeah, buddy. And he said, are you having a stroke? <laughs> I said, I think I might be. And with that, I decided to come to work this evening. So at the moment, I can honestly tell you that the only thing that is in my mind currently is Round and Round by Rat, uh, because I listened to it for about 20 minutes this evening. Nevertheless, uh, we're here tonight for a really positive thing, which is to celebrate a life, uh, specifically the life of Divya Soman, who happens to actually be with us here tonight as well. And uh, we're going to tell a little bit about uh, her story from this past June, and then we're going to recognize the folks that, that assisted her um, in a time of need. Um, before I do that, I just want to mention that we are so lucky here in Chester County to have all branches of the emergency services that we have, and not only to have them, but to have them readily available to us in really emergent situations where folks need help. Um, and, and one thing in particular to note is that um, a lot of these services in this area are still volunteer as well. When we're talking about the fire service and we're talking about uh, EMS, uh, and many of those folks are devoting their time and their lives outside of their other jobs to be able to provide the services that we've all gotten really used to uh, having uh, daily. Um, the one thing that I can tell you about all of these people that I have met over the course of my time in law enforcement, whether they're on the paid side of an organization or whether they're volunteering their time, is that they're all really doing this for the same reason. They're all interested in providing to their communities. They're all interested in giving back and they're all interested in the same thing, which is to protect the health, safety, and welfare of everybody that uh, we're servicing here in Euclid and folks that come in from outside of Euclid. And everybody gets fantastic treatment here. I can tell you that I know that there are other areas of the county that aren't as fortunate. They wouldn't get the emergency medical care uh, in such a timely fashion or, or the fire service or the police for that matter. And so I just think that Euclid Township, again, really strives to do very well in that area. And, um, and we really all are a hallmark of what things should look like when it, when it comes to that, in my opinion. So I just wanted to thank everybody for that. Um, now, more specifically, on June 11th of 2022 um, was a day like any other day in the summer. Uh, I have no doubt that across the country, there were folks everywhere who were preparing to run their various 5Ks in communities all across the country that looked just like Euclid Township. And it happens all throughout the summer. And on that particular day, while uh, we did not have anyone specifically assigned to that event, uh, like we always do, we asked the sergeant of the shift and those who would be working that day to stop by the event, make sure things are going well, try to identify if there are any needs or problems, and then they can be addressed at that point in time. Uh, and likewise, uh, the, the fire company did the same, purely on a volunteer basis, I might add. Uh, so it was sometime after nine o'clock in the morning on the 11th, uh, Sergeant Ryan Murphy happened to be at the event representing the police department at the time. And while he was there, uh, he looked across the way and he happened to notice Captain Michael Lamb from the Lionville Fire Company, who had decided to take time out of his own day that morning and come to the event to make sure that everything would be would be OK. Um, he saw that Michael Lamb was um, getting ready to tend to someone who had apparently had an issue and was on the ground at the time. Now, of course, I don't think anybody knew how serious the situation was at the time, uh, but what we knew very quickly thereafter was um, that Mrs. Soman had 
fallen. And the reason that she had fallen was because she had gone into cardiac arrest. I believe what this was her first 5K that she was gonna be participating in. She didn't have any known medical history that would have caused her not to participate in an event like that. And suddenly she was in an emergency situation that required some very, very high level care. Well, with that, uh, Sergeant Murphy and uh, Captain Lamb began administering care to her. They quickly realized that, uh, that in fact, uh, she was no longer breathing and she did not have a pulse. And uh, they very quickly jumped into action. And this is exactly what the police, fire, and EMS train for constantly so that these things become very second nature when a situation like that occurs. Uh, so they also reached out uh, to make sure, sure that Euclid Ambulance would be dispatched so that they could get a higher level of care than what they would be able to provide on the scene there. Uh, as that was unfolding, uh, they were able to have access to and they utilized an AED. And uh, during that time, the AED actually requested that they utilize uh, that to shock Mrs. Solomon uh, on two separate occasions. Now, if you're not familiar, uh, over 350,000 people perish from sudden, a sudden cardiac event in this country every year. And that's even with the technologies that we have. But what we know is that if you have very quick access to a device like an AED, then your chance of survival is very much heightened. Um, what we know about what the AED can do is it can take a person who has just had a sudden cardiac event and their heart is in fibrillation, uh, which means that it's really kind of lost its electrical signal that's causing it to beat in a rhythmic fashion and the heart sort of goes into a spasm and it's no longer, and please, um, if any of you want to correct me later, that is that is absolutely fine. Um, the heart loses its rhythm and it's unable then to allow your body to receive oxygen uh, being pumped throughout your body. And without a defibrillation of that event, you very well may perish. And so the AEDs are incredibly important. And we know that they were um, used twice that day. So within a very, very short period of time, uh, the folks from Euclid Ambulance were able to respond and they provided a much uh, higher level of care and uh, continued that care all the way to the hospital where um, they eventually you know, handed her off to the medical team there. And I'm so happy to say that not only obviously did uh, Mrs. Salman survive that event, but she's actually here with us tonight. She wanted to meet the folks who were involved in that incident. Um, so, so again, not only did she survive, but she is doing fantastic and we can't be more happy to to have you here with us tonight so with that if you wouldn't mind coming up uh, we're going to ask her to assist the lieutenant and i with handing out uh, some awards that we have for everybody who was involved that day so thank you so much for being here we really appreciate your time i'm going to kind of step off to the side here and uh, i'm going to hand this over to uh, the lieutenant and she's going to take it from there hello everybody so we have six awards up here uh, with the exception of the recipient's name, they all say the same thing, and I'll read that. And uh, we will call each of you up one at a time, and then we would have Ms. Solman hand them to the person, okay? All right. So the first one is for Sergeant Ryan Murphy. Uh, Life-saving award presented to Sergeant Ryan Murphy, Euclid Township Police Department, in recognition of your quick and professional action on June 11th, 2022, that led to the saving of another human life in the line of duty. Our next one, life-saving award presented to Captain Michael Lamb. Life-saving award presented to Medic Edmund Angiolillo. Life-saving award presented to Advanced Emergency Medical Technician, Andrew Chambers. Life-saving award presented to Advanced Emergency Medical Technician, Joe Crawford.
and life-saving award presented to emergency medical technician Ryan Campbell. You'll you'll accept it on his behalf. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. So again, thank you so much. Uh, certainly, if anybody wanted to say anything, we would be more than happy to have you do that. Otherwise, again, thank you so much uh, uh, for the time that you spend uh, working here in Euclid Township and or volunteering your time uh, to make sure that the citizens here in Euclid Township are safe every single day. So thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I thank you so much for uh, presenting those awards and thank you to all of our volunteers who we appreciate um, so much for everything that you do from patching up a, you know, scab knee or scrape knee to saving a life. Um, and uh, I wanted to formally recognize too, we had a resident come in, uh, Tony Gorkin, she's a member of our EAC and she came in last month. Um, because she and her fellow volunteers at Longwood Gardens saved a human life just by learning CPR and administering CPR uh, in the meadow at Longwood Gardens until an ambulance could come. And she pointed out the resource, the awesome resource that we have that the ambulance company gives out free CPR trainings. Um, in fact, you have another one coming up February. Uh, okay. Yeah. And so, of course, we continually run community CPR out in different facilities. So we'll, we'll come to you or at you for the ambulance sort of registration. Anybody can look at trading there at station 87.com. All right. Great. Thank you so much for doing that. And um, I'm really, really appreciative of your actions on that day at the 5K and that we have a life to celebrate because of it. So thank you. Are there any other comments? No. Okay. Well then, we'll move on. Uh, the next item of the agenda on the agenda, and if you guys, you don't have to stay for the rest of the meeting. Feel <laughs> Thanks for coming. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Wow. It's not half the room. in there that was that's the highlight okay so we'll go ahead and move on with our regular meeting um the next item of business is the downingtown area recreation consortium darc update well, i'm not going to worry about the microphone okay uh, I was going to thank them as well because I got to ride an ambulance last December a year ago with a pulse and it dipped under 30. And uh, so they, I don't think, saved my life, but I'm still here. We're, all in my family. we're glad you're here. Yeah. I'm uh, glad you're here. Since the names. Uh, so that means uh, but the final two seven four job mission to advance community based friendly incident, health, well being, and personal growth that enhances the quality of life in the schools. That really speaks to the whole reason why it works because if the township had to pay for the Services that we provide, it would be very difficult to do that. But joining up with the other townships and the school district, it really makes it work. DARP was established in 1994. Uh, it was approximately 80 square miles and approximately 70,000 people. If we were the, uh, if we were in a, a town, we were the third largest in the state of Pennsylvania by area, 
and we need to increase our population, cover that amount of people. So we uh, have it grown since 94, 46% population wise. So the, the value, you'll see the value is, is pretty low. We partner with various private nonprofit organizations, commercial enterprises, as well as the school district uh, for buildings when they're available for average school functions based on the availability. The, uh, the 21 census had 98,000 of the approximately 68,000 Euclid residents. So we are a big part of DART. Uh, and we are the largest theory, about 28%. We offer programs for children and adults, including exercise programs, adult softball, basketball leagues, summer camps, computer workshops, home classes, dance classes. Uh, those are just some of the programs. I can give numerous bus trips. We're taking a good bus trip to Atlantic City for the air show, bus trip to uh, City Cherry Hospital. Bus trip to go to see Wicked uh, and other different bus trips throughout the year, which is starting to ramp back up given the whole COVID. Uh, we recently did a survey and we're doing it a, a uh, we have a, a grant from the Pennsylvania Park Association. Uh, and 100% of the people that responded said that public recreation is something that they expected. So I don't know if you're seeing that in the surveys that you, you get, but we are hearing that they think that all the townships and cities should provide that. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, DARC is, is doing a multifaceted program. We also comprehensive program and uh, from 1121 to 1122, Euclid had 795 over 4,359 users, which is just short of 20%. One of the things we're noticing is that we're not getting enough communication out there. And we're starting to see some newsletters from some of the townships, which is helping. Uh, I also have a, a newspaper that, I forget the name of it, I'll that for you. Uh, our revenue was down big time from COVID. And we're just starting to see that four months in a row of increasing enrollment, increasing revenue, which is positive. Now, Nicole Luger, who is our executive director, joined us in March of 19, and then COVID pretty much shut us down the following, uh, you know, January, February, March. Things really hit in people's way. So uh, I got to do that with a good time in the hospital. Uh, as I mentioned, the enrollment is up the last four months. Summer camps, we will have this summer approximately 100 camps, which are weekly camps. Some of them are, are camps, some of them are just recreation camps. Uh, there's a Lego camp. Uh, that's way beyond my capability this year. The, uh, we have three softball leagues this year. We have any given summer, the normal, we will have 75 to 100 programs. We have an engineering program. Uh, we have one called the Average Doodle, which is an art program for children. Mm -hmm. We have 12 programs going into the uh, skating. Uh, what's the one up in the township line? We'll have 12. Yeah, 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 we have power like, play? Uh, power play, that's right. Yes, power play. We have 12 uh, skating programs going on right there, adult and children. There's a free uh, skate coming up soon uh, that anybody, you know, just go in there and, and uh, it's available to them. Residents of Dark. We have uh, movie tickets, amusement park passes. We have uh, another bus trip to go down to Washington for cherry blossoms. And uh, normally we would be using uh, line development where there's some construction this summer. So we will be having our summer camps down in Town Hermo, the barn in Upper Euclid, East Brandywine Township, and East Town Township. And uh, some of the other, we also have a robotics camp with toys for children. So that's something uh, that's kind of exciting. And growing the uh, the bus trips, we're using the Lionel School of Dance as one. Well. And uh, we're hoping that you will be able to uh, continue with helping us fund what we offer. And again, we're looking for, I think the number is $29,068. 
uh, in this year's budget for us. Mm -hmm. And compared to if you were to try to do the, the normal the size of the uh, population would be seven employees. Now, we don't control or we're not responsible for parks, but we should have four, and we have 1.5. So, full time employees. So, we uh, we're understaffed. Probably like you, we're having a tough time finding people with the employment situation. But uh, Nicole does a wonderful job in providing all the different programs. And again, you know, 75 to 100 programs, I mentioned some of them. I'd like to see any, you know, the smaller townships would, would have a tougher time. Mm -hmm. Katie would probably do it. But... <laughs> she probably could. So, yep. do you have any questions, anybody? Um, I had a question. Do you still, I haven't seen them, um, but I also haven't been looking because my kids are kind of grown, although I know you have programs for adults too, but um, do you still send out the paper catalogs to residents? Sure, go more online okay. because, you know, costs. Yeah. Uh, but there are, we do advertise through social media. We advertise there. Can we mention that? Uh, This is a winter program. Thank you. Is there anything the township can do to help um, get the word out about the programs? Nicole is always talking with Katie about uh, different things. I know if you have a newsletter, we have a digital newsletter. Yeah, and a digital. Well, it's that's where yeah. I buy a newspaper because I like to cross it all. You know. <laughs> that high school kid at Wawa looks like how do I scan the same? <laughs> the uh yeah, newsletter would be a big help. And I don't think we're involved with the newsletter. I don't think we we've worked with Nicole a few times to get stuff in the, the newsletter. And I would also offer, I mean, we have a whole suite of social media that we would be happy to to get. Yeah, we, I mean we could always use help for that. So okay. <laughs> a lot of times, at least um in, in in Euclid, if we put it on our on our web page and our, actually on our Facebook page, for instance, some of the neighborhood groups will grab it from Euclid. So that that's actually probably more effective than our our actual. But the, like the Marchwood has a someone who ministers the Marchwood page, and if, if it looks interesting, they'll spread it. So we'd be happy to do. I think we'd be happy to do that. You know, happy to work with you on that. I'll mention to Nicole. And, and coming back to where I started with the ambulance thing, I also want to thank the police chief because with my involvement with community day for so many years, this department is almost unbelievable. Absolutely. So we are lucky where we live. So yep. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Bill. Everybody get out there and sign up to have some fun. <laughs> um, the next item on the agenda is the uh, permission to transfer excess general fund from 2022 surplus to capital improvement and insurance trust funds. Right. So also fun conversation. Um, <laughs> we are looking right now at a preliminary surplus of just under $1.5 million for 2022. And what we're asking for permission for from the board this evening is to transfer $1,250,000 to our capital improvement fund to fund some of the capital improvements that we have coming up for this year and future years, as well as transferring 150000 to our insurance trust. Okay. Can I get a motion? So moved. No, you have to make the motion. <laughs> uh, I'll make the motion to transfer $1.25 million to the capital improvement fund. Right. 150000 to the insurance trust. 150,000 to the insurance trust means, so. I'll second. Any comments or questions from the board? Any comments or questions from the public? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Uh, next items on the agenda, items four through nine are permission to advertise bids for various things. Do you wanna quickly run through those, Scott? Right, so I'll go through them and then we can pass these all uh, with one motion. Uh, the first first item number four is permission to advertise the township street sweeping program this is something that we do annually and we'll continue to do this um number five is permission to advertise bid for the 2023 road paving project um number six and seven i'm going to combine into one item this is for sanitary and 
um, sewer or sanitary sewer and stormwater improvements that needed to happen on Maple and Beach Street. Um, it's listed twice, but it's for one project. Um, and then permission to advertise for the Peck Road sewer pipe replacement, as well as permission to advertise for the stormwater pipe replacement at Peck Road. This is one project as well, but we are bidding those items separately as separate projects. Okay. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve uh, permission to advertise for the uh, bids uh, listed on the agenda, items four through nine. A second. Any comments or questions from the board? Any comments or questions from the public? All in favor? Aye. 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 The ayes have it. Mm. All right. So then we're on to item 10 on under business permission to join line painting bid. Sorry, that's me. I didn't have a microphone. Okay. Um, so we're looking to join the bid with West Town, East Goshen, and West Goshen. Um, and this is for line painting for township maintenance. Okay. Someone want to make a motion for that? All motion that doing the line painting bid. Second. Any comments or questions? Any comments or questions from the public? All in favor? Aye. 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 Eyes have it. Next item uh, are is number eleven resolutions. Resolution twenty twenty three. Or do we have to vote for these separately? Yeah, let's do these separately. Okay. So the first one is twenty twenty three dash oh six East Gosh East Goshen Milling Equipment bid. So this resolution is um, what we're looking to do is join the bid with East Goshen for mill for a milling machine and dump trucks for township maintenance. Okay. This, can I get a motion to approve resolution 2023-06 East Goshen Milling Equipment bid? So moved. I'll second. Any comments or questions from the public? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Next up is mo resolution 2023-07, our video retention policy. Uh, right. So as was mentioned earlier, our, our meetings are recorded and posted to YouTube. Mm -hmm. What this policy is proposing is to have those videos available publicly for one year and then uh, destroyed after that. Okay. And removed from YouTube. I'm sorry, what was that? And removed from YouTube. Yeah, okay. Um, can I get a motion to approve resolution 2023-07, the video retention policy? So moved. Second. Any comments or questions from the board? No. Any comments or questions from the public? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Uh, item C under the resolutions 2023-08 conduct for public meeting policy. So this is something that we discussed at the workshop meeting two, a week ago. Um, uh, on the back of the agendas currently is, is printed a rules for public conduct for meetings. Um, this resolution would amend that to um, be more concurrent with what we're looking at to do in the future. Um, one of the bigger changes I will say is that moving forward, this would limit public comment for our hybrid meetings um, to those who are in attendance for those meetings. Um, and it also establishes guidelines for length of public comment um, and how to address the board and staff. Okay. So this will be, if approved this evening, this will be printed on the back of agendas moving forward. Okay. Can I get a motion to approve resolution 2023-08 conduct for public meeting policy? So moved. I'll second. Are there any comments or questions from the board? Are there any comments or questions from the public? All in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Moving on to item 12, under business, permission to advertise stop signs at Rice Boulevard and Stockton Drive and at Pennsylvania <laughs> Drive and Rice Boulevard. Uh, yes, so we need to pass an ordinance for new stop signs. Yep. Uh, so we're looking to erect one at the intersection of Rice Boulevard and Stockton, which was a requirement from the conditional use decision from the Plan Life Care Facility, as well as at Pennsylvania and Rice, uh, which was a requirement for from the new Town Center 2 project that's going in. Okay. Can I get a motion to permit to advertise stop signs at Rice Boulevard and Stockton Drive and at Pennsylvania Drive and Rice Boulevard? So moved. Second. The motion's been made and seconded. Any comments or questions? 
Any comments or questions from the public? Okay, if you could come up and just give us your name. Okay. The question is where the stop is going to be. They almost been allowed to stop in by the ACAC. Is it a new one or is it just something new that you have to So new stop signs will be going in, so it'll become a four-way stop as opposed to a two-way stop. And well, why is that? Because the next stop will be up at Pennsylvania, not even a three-year So it, It's a throughway, so they're very late. It is, and it's a very busy intersection that actually... Um, the conditional use decision required a traffic light there, um, but at this point, it's not warranted at Pennsylvania and no at Stockton, Stockton. and Bryce. Yes, but it's not warranted now. Yes, I was just curious because it just seems like the next stop sign is so close to that. Yeah. Okay. I was just curious. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate your answer. Are there any other comments or questions about the stop signs? No. Don't take a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Next up is permission to advertise the YMCA at 50 Devon Drive, the request for conditional use hearing. Uh, yes. Yeah. So the YMCA is actually looking to convert their outdoor swimming pool into uh, multi-purpose courts uh, for pickleball and basketball. So they need to reopen their conditional use hearing, uh, looking to schedule that hearing at next month's Board of Supervisors meeting. Okay. So this is just permission to advertise that hearing. Uh, can I get a motion to advertise the YMCA's conditional use hearing? So moved. Second. Any comments or questions from the public? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. So next up, item 14, uh, 430 Valley Hill Road, waiver request for subdivision land development. Uh, yes. Yeah. So if you uh, take a look at the screen, the property at 430 Valley Hill Road, a uh, portion of it is in Euclid Township. Uh, the remainder of the property is in West Whiteland. Uh, the applicant is looking to absorb the Euclid parcel into the properties in West Whiteland um, and create a three lot subdivision. Uh, the two new lots will have a driveway, a shared driveway off Valley Hill Road. Um, so they would need a shared driveway agreement um, as well as a road opening driveway permit. Um, at this point, the applicant is going through the subdivision process in West Whiteland, so they're requesting a waiver from Euclid for having to go through the subdivision process here also. Okay. Um, can I get a motion granting a waiver of subdivision land development contingent on compliance with the EB, the EB Walsh review letter and that the applicant obtain a good a road opening driveway permit at the time of construction, as well as submit a shared driveway maintenance agreement for township review prior to reporting. So moved. Second. Are there any comments or questions from the board? No. Are there any comments or questions from the public? Then I'll take a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Next up, item 15 is Chick-fil-A at 211 Eagle View Boulevard, preliminary final land development plan. Um, so Chick-fil-A has been in front of the Planning Commission a few times, as well as the Zoning Hearing Board. Uh, they received a variance for reduction in parking. What they're looking to do is put a 415 square foot addition on the back of the building uh, in order to expand their kitchen. Um, at the same time, they're going to reconfigure the parking lot in order to have a dual drive through lane. While doing that, also, they are changing the flow of traffic so that it would be one way. Um, if you come off of Down Forge, you would make a left and go around the building. And if you came in off of Eagle View, which currently you can make a right. You wouldn't be able to do that. You would have to go around building. So it would be a one-way 
Oh, you mean you can't make a left back out onto the Eagle View Boulevard? You won't. Currently, you can come in off Eagle View Boulevard and make a right. Oh, oh, I see. This way, uh, it would be one way, so you'd only be able to go out this driveway. Okay, but you can still take, so you can go out and go back onto Eagle View Boulevard. If you came in on Eagle View, you'd have to go around the building uh -huh. and get into the drive through Okay. Or into the parking lot from going around the building. Okay. The, the access on uh, Eagle View Boulevard will stay the same, but it's only a right turn out on the Eagle View Boulevard currently. That cannot be Okay. The plan was in front of the Planning Commission this month. Uh, they did receive their recommendation, uh, which included uh, the waiver request for the plan for preliminary slash final. Mm -hmm. um, one of the comments that did come up um, and was included in the recommendation from the Planning Commission was for the applicant to explore uh, additional trash receptacles okay as well so if you guys are okay with uh the plan approval there's also a resolution mm -hmm. um number 23-09 that would approve this land development plan okay is the applicant here the applicant is here um chris regal from collier's engineers here okay um i just i mean I don't know. Does anybody have questions? I have a I have a couple questions about the plan. Um, well, since we already mentioned the litter control, is there a plan to somehow yeah, mitigate that? For the team member, you know, we'll make sure that we speak with the reverend again. Yeah. Okay. Is uh, the restaurant aware that we're passing a plastic bag ordinance, that we already passed a plastic bag ordinance that goes into effect in March? Uh, <laughs> we might be out of huh? so, Okay. Yeah. yeah, you do. Yes. Yeah. It includes straws, plastic straws. And styrofoam cups. And what? And styrofoam. Yeah. Do they use styrofoam? Oh, you guys use styrofoam? Yeah. So if you we're trying to spread the message and we've already reached out to all the companies, but you know, these things sometimes get lost in the shuffle. Yeah. Since we're talking about it, I thought I'd bring it up. Um what about uh my main concern is pedestrian safety and accessibility. I know this plan sort of caters to the drive-through traffic, but can you just explain to me um how you're making sure that it's safe for pedestrians that are either parking and walking into the restaurant or walking from the sidewalks in or surrounding areas to the restaurant. Yeah, yeah, that would make that's a new crosswalk that we find it on the Eagle View Boulevard. Okay. So let me uh let's look up the gravity store which is that'll be the basically two lanes of stagnant right here, which it is now, but it's new. Mobilized, I guess, and be overhead, you know, be there with push your order. So, um, yeah, there'll be a crosswalk there, um, to help the pedestrians cross. Okay. Um, let's see. I had another question. Um, does anybody else have a question while I've one thing I wanted to clarify, um, there were a few comments that were put into the landscaping review regarding screening and then the implementation of native species for the the shade trees that were going to be put in. I wasn't sure where we landed with that um, as far as whether those were addressed. Yeah, we actually spoke to One of the main concerns, I guess, is the screening between Chick-fil-A and the yeah, adjacent property there. So there's a little bit of a gap. So we're going to fill that gap in with some additional trees. Like that. The, I think there was two parts there. One of them was an existing number. Two on that. The northern side there, because it is a, I guess, a split bottom line. So there's nowhere to put screening mm -hmm. on that. So mm -hmm. that was letter. Okay. Um, and what uh, there was a concern, I think, uh, 
asked uh, at the Planning Commission about if there's a uh, backup of drive through traffic and the ability for cars parked um, in that area where it's the driveway and not yet the drive through, would they be able to back up if it's if it's backed up? Yes. If the line is long, yes. which well, I've seen it. That drive, that long drive. Yeah. We can stack 20 with ours. I guess all the way into the um, you know, big up windows. That's a significant amount. Um, could there ever be a time when maybe somebody can get out possibly, but 20 cars is, and everything would be internal to the site rather than backing up on the evening floor, which they're trying to do, you know, blocking their traffic on evening floor. Okay. Does anyone else have a question? So just uh, when people come out, of course, my memories can't take a, you have to take a right on the Eagle View Boulevard coming out of. Yeah, that's right. That's where my name is. Yeah, yeah. So most, and from, they're going to have to come around the loop and then out along Dallin Forge if they wanted to go. Yeah. Or they could go up to the other. Yeah, yeah through Freddy's. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Which I think a lot of people do. I yeah. Yeah. You never go around. I, I usually go to Friday's stuff. Right. <laughs> no. <it's... laughs> um, okay, so that I was just wondering if that's gonna because I know some going out that lane now can be a little bit I don't know if it's crowded, but it's a little tricky with the, the configuration. So um Yeah, I don't I mean I'm the civil engineer project traffic engineer before. Okay. With the circulation thing, I think this is the room over here, this is kind of, yeah. the best case scenario. Yeah. I just want to understand that. Okay. Well, if there aren't any more questions, I'll make a motion or. We made the motion yet. No, we didn't make a motion yet. I know. I just started, I just started asking okay. questions. Um, so, can I get a motion to approve the waiver for the plan uh, uh, to be approved as preliminary final for Chick fil A? A preliminary final land development pursuant to the compliance with the review letters from the township consultants, including the submission of a lighting plan for review, as well as compliance with the zoning hearing board decision and uh, the provision of additional trash receptacles on site if necessary. So moved. A second. Are there any other comments or questions? No. Are there any comments or questions from the public? Then I'll take a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Eyes have it. Thank All right. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, so we need to pass a resolution. My bad. Can I get a? Yeah, I guess yeah. you need to make a motion for the yeah. resolution also. Uh, can I get a motion to approve resolution 2023-09, the preliminary final development plan waiver? So moved. Sorry. Are there any comments or questions? Any comments or questions from the public? All in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Next up, item 16, Downingtown High School East, 50 Devon Drive, preliminary final land development plan. So as you are all aware, <laughs> um, we have been in discussions with the applicant, uh, reviewing their plans for uh, 27,942 square foot at Dying Company's High School um, in order to incorporate their new learning program that they're proposing. Um, they were at the Planning Commission in February, it's February, right? Um, <laughs> got their <laughs> recommendation uh, from the Planning Commission. Uh, in addition to the adi proposed addition, they'd be filling in a courtyard here and putting an addition on the back and off the gym. Um, at the same time, the, the traffic flow on site is going to be changing. So currently, um, Currently, you come in off Devon Drive and you drive behind the school and around in a one-way traffic flow. 
This new proposal is going to separate the parents from the buses. So the buses would come in and go towards the back and loop around and come back out. So it would be two way for the buses. The parents would have two way. They would come in off Devon, um, make the right and go around the front of the school and go back out. Um, in addition, the, there's improvements on Devon Drive that are being proposed. Uh, they'd be adding medium medians and crosswalks. Um, one crosswalk would be relocated from uh, Devon Drive to the other side of the school entrance. Uh, there would be a bigger crosswalk down by the student lot crossing there and then a new um, crosswalk and median down near the area of the Y. Uh, those medians would have uh, light signals on them um, for the crosswalks. And the applicants are here if there's any questions for them. Uh, they are requesting the waiver from preliminary final land development which is what they are here for, uh, as well as a waiver from section 408 for having to provide a fiscal impact study um, and a waiver from section 214-25B12 uh, to be able to use pipes that are less than 18 inches in diameter for stormwater. Okay. Uh, there is a resolution 2023-10, uh, if you guys are so inclined to approve their land development plan tonight. Okay. Um, I'll, should we make a motion first? That's always so weird to make a motion first. So, do we do a motion for the waiver first? Is that what? And then How many we waivers? For the, Mark, do we do the waiver first and then the resolution or we do it all together? Or? You can do them. You can do them as one. Mm -hmm. You can do them separately. I mean, the resolution is for the approval of the plan and I think it incorporates all of the it would be a, a motion. Okay. Yeah, the re I mean, the resolution is the approval. Okay. And it includes all the... All the conditions of the approval. Oh, everything. Okay. Um, all right, then. Can I get a motion to approve? Before we have a discussion, we're just making a motion just so everyone's aware. Make a motion to approve resolution 2023-10, uh, the preliminary final land development plan for Downingtown High School, High School East. So moved. Second. Um, are there any comments or questions from the board? Thank you, me. You look have some too. Don't I'm, worry. I have some. I'm all right, happy to start. Yeah. All right, sure. If everyone is so fine. Um, I just wanted to say that I think that where we landed with the pedestrian plan for Devon Drive um, is fantastic. I think it's going to make um, some much needed improvements to pedestrian safety and coupled with the circulation change um, into the facility and getting those cars off of Devon. Um, I'm really hopeful that that will uh, alleviate some of the congestion that we're seeing on Devon Drive. I just wanted two points of clarification regarding um, the approval for tonight. And that is, um, the first has to do with the, the westernmost crosswalk, which is down by the student parking lot across from the LYA entrance. Um, I know we had discussed what that was going to look like. And I think that having a median there and visually narrowing that road is gonna be a speed improvement um, and give us a, pace, a space for pedestrians to pause. Um, my question is just in regards to approval tonight, will there be um, a button activated crossing signal at that point once the electric is moved? Is that something that we... Uh, yes, our um, traffic consultant, McMahon, had reviewed the pedestrian improvement plan. Uh, they did suggest a mast arm over, um, over the street, but it would have a motion or a push button activation. Um, in talking with the school district, um, trying to get a mast arm is a challenge at this point. Um, not sure that that is the best option for that area. Um, I think with just hole on each side um, with the push button 
activation that would achieve so it'll just be on a pole work. versus hanging across yeah. the roadway so okay. currently the the new school zone sign is in that location uh the applicant will be exploring moving that school zone sign uh closer to 113. okay thank you um the second question i had has to do with the traffic study um, that's going to be bumped, I believe, for completion before the end of 2024. And I just wanted to verify that that study is going to include not just Devon Drive, but the stretch that goes up 113 towards the Landville Elementary School, as well as down into the, the middle school area to take a more holistic look at how that entire campus area is impacted. That was discussed at the planning commission meeting. I believe the school district has agreed to that as well. Great, thank you. <laughs> Have they agreed to it? <laughs> Some screaming. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm here without that. We can certainly. I appreciate that. I think it's important to take a look at how that entire area is impacted because anyone that's driven through that area at dismissal can see mm -hmm. kids come up from the middle school, they come up to the high school, they cross to the Y. Um, they're, the whole area is impacted. They're going to Wawa, they're crossing the street. And so I think just because it's been so long since we've really taken a look at addressing some of these issues and we now we now have the vehicle to kind of do it, it's important to, to look at the big picture there and make sure that we're doing what we can to make sure the pedestrians and the kids are, you know, given opportunities to cross safely. I, I have a quick, if you... Are you done or I, well? I just have a clarifying question. What something Miss Obensky um, mentioned the placement of the medians. I thought they were going to be uh, by the YMCA and then uh, by the crossing in front of the school. Is there a median that's going to be by the LYA field and the student lot? No, there is not. Okay, not a median there because there's a um, left turn lane. Yeah, the okay. Okay, that's my fault. So the pedestrians will have to just cross all the way over um, using the blinking yes, crosswalk. Yes, widening the crosswalk. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and so is it on the side? Is it still in the middle of that little triangle island there, the crosswalk? You know how the student lot, you can turn left or right out of it, and then there's a little, what's that thing called? Pork chop, yeah. Is the crosswalk at the pork chop or is it moving at all? It should be like the width of the pork chop. Like it'll, it'll widen. Okay. Where would the button be? The signal right now is in the pork chop. Okay. 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 And will there be striping? So, I mean, obviously people aren't just going to go to the pork chop and be done walking around. Um, what? I think they're striping there already. Uh, is there striping? Will there be striping? Yes. Yeah. Just on either side of the pork chop, just so that the student drivers know where to stop their car to wait for a pedestrian. I just don't see it on the plan, but it's right here. It's on the center plan. Um, so the pedestrian improvement plan is like an addendum to the land development plan. They okay. Together, but they are. So, but I'm saying what I'm saying is that between the pork chop and the sidewalks on either side. No, that not that way. The right turn. Right turn. Like, where are there crosswalks in front of the students right. coming out? Okay. Okay, so just on that side, and there's not on the other side. No, the virtual. I'm saying, what if you want, just for example, if you were walking from uh, the other side of Devon Drive on 113, you know, across from 113, and you're walking to high school, right? 
you're walking up that sidewalk yeah. and you want to go to the high school okay. i guess you're walking up through the Parking. tennis courts yeah okay okay so you're not really you would never go all the way across to the other I'm looking at this here now and we're going to be here. But I guess the question is right now, I believe there's a crosswalk here mm -hmm. that ties us back in here. Mm -hmm. I guess the question is, is, is this an accessible route here through that island? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and that that's uh so you were asking more something to come up and continue up yeah. this line. Um, right. Not sure that like, you're with us to verify it. And that's an accessible route through here to tie into that. Yeah, I I think it's. I think it, 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 I think it is. I think it is. Okay. Um. Uh. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, so there, there are five hundred there now. Sidewalking so here now. Okay. So if you think of this is accessible, just doesn't show that as as like the way up over here. Okay. But we'll, we'll we'll verify that. Okay. That's okay. That's it today. Okay, and then there's sidewalk all the way to the high school, but then once you cross the high school entrance road, that sideway turns into asphalt. Is that the YMCA at that point, or why is that that totally what? Totally yeah, I just it's always weedy and kind of crumbly. I was just wondering if that will be improved. The sidewalk, not up to the school, the sidewalk. Oh. Okay. Why don't you be on the YMCA through that property here? So that is an asphalt walk on the here right now. And the school district is um, um there are no proposed improvements as part of this to improve that improve that walk along here. But there will be an improvement further down closer. Can we scroll over to the right of the picture? So um, yeah, this is the YMCA entrance here. So they basically have a crosswalk going in that spot for the YMCA. So that's going to go into the asphalt. Uh, uh, right. This is the YMCA asphalt wall. Okay. But the improvements will, I mean, it will be obviously ADA accessible and all of that. That's going to happen. Um, Please. Sorry. On the ramp that's we see on the pre-lift and the trunk of the donuts, the road is going to be as well. So why are we moving out by such a little To me, it makes sense just to fix the whole thing and make it all concrete. If you guys could work together with the YMCA, that would be awesome to just fix that whole strip. Um, but, uh, yeah. I don't want yeah, I know. It looks old. Yeah. Yeah, they'll be here next month. Um, but if you got would be willing to coordinate that way, like if you're making this pedestrian improvement and the Y's fixing the sidewalk, you know, that you don't waste time fixing each other's problems. Um, uh, do you expect any new trips in and out of the school? with this uh, plan? Like how many, like, are there gonna be more students or more staff or do you expect more trips in and out than we have today? Okay. And it's really to expand the science area. Yeah, so many students want to be in the science where they can use the stem of that is and we look a lot of science rooms um in the English and then the classroom just so that he's um there's an atrium out there uh Kara mentioned in there and it's for this new collaborative building. And the students are really able to study on their own mm -hmm. and go to go to class anywhere. Mm -hmm. All they go three days a week, you can eat at home or sitting in the ground. However, we smoke the students and things. So we were really well to be able to do it. We're all going to be here. We study over the next two years of poverty. That's very definitely done. Finally, we get. 
Um, so there won't be any change in numbers or like vehicle mix as far as like cars and versus buses, the same. Oh, sorry. Just as a follow-up. Yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Let me interrupt. But um, has there been any thought to controlling the number of parents that it, that can come and pick up, and or controlling the number of kids who can drive? I mean, I I won't wouldn't want to be the politician who said that it, on the school board. <laughs> on the school board, but but seriously, like you know, we you provide buses for all these children. And I know that doesn't work for every family. Sometimes there's reasons, there's really good reasons. I, I just wonder if it's all, every single person. And so I wonder, like, we're, we're dealing with a lot of traffic. And part of that is because people who are using transportation, that mass transportation, like a bus, are taking individual transportation, like a car. Um, and I just don't know if you haven't given any thought to how how that can be. Well, I think we're really badly having a problem. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And just to follow up on the students driving, uh, will I, seniors used to be able to park up at the top parking lot, correct? Uh, right. Now they don't. Right. Right. Okay. Um, so I had another question about pedestrian. So if you're a student walking to school from the neighborhood, Marchwood, um, and you're walking from the neighborhood and you uh, pass that point, but you turn into the high school up the sidewalk, how do you get into the building like how are you letting because that first intersection when you get onto the campus it's kind of tricky to cross from side to side if you wanted to go from the left side as you're going in to the right side yes okay
Um, what about kids who want to ride their bicycle to school? What's the plan to accommodate the bicycle traffic? Well, okay. Bicycle. Oh, right. Mm hmm. Uh, around the back of the building. I can tell you probably why it doesn't get used is because it's not biker friendly. Like there's no bike path and, you know, it's a little bit daunting to ride a bike into a driveway with a bunch of cars and buses if there's no parked um, bicycle lane. So that might be a deterrent. So it's something we can learn about the path and see what we do. Um, I mean, we're we're aligned with the county and really trying to, you know, in like do more multimodal transportation, making uh, different types of transportation available to everybody just as a general concept. And um, I, I personally would like to see uh, ample space for, if you look at other, you know, cities and countries and different places, there's definitely a bigger bike racks, covered bike racks for kids to really encourage kids that live close by that might want to ride their bike to school as a quick way, quicker than walking. I I, I agree with that. I, I think, you know, in, internally to the township, we could also think about improve things we might want to do on Devon Drive and, mm -hmm. and in, in Marchwood specifically, because that's mm -hmm. really the easiest bike that we could do to make those more bike friendly, because there's also things we could improve on. Yeah. Okay. So would that would the pedestrian improvements on Devon Drive be amenable to adding bike lanes or is it, it just like adding the median squishes out any other type of transportation you're either walking or driving so so i mean basically bike lanes that can just two types of bikes dedicated bike lanes short road like kind of other things um here versus so the the ultimately here the configuration internal here um, they they have sidewalks throughout the community, but those are going to be, uh, I think, it's typically a four foot wide sidewalk, um, uh, pedestrian and bicycle friendly to uh, to mix mix users when it comes down to um, bicycle users. So they're really the only option that you would have is um is to turn around and try to strike plane. Um, uh, something in here with a signage saying biker, biker later, share, share the drive or something to that extent. Um, unfortunately, the project is maxed out for Urbius coverage. You're uh, just when you're at 24.9999, I believe we've done which they're at max, they're max for Urbius coverage. And be accommodating here for the whole, um, uh, as well as your campus area here. So, um, the ability for them to build in another, um, widen something out to accommodate that problem and create their full this stage of the game. Um, so I think internally you're talking about doing some line striking for signage internally to help provide that and do it in somewhere um, where you can park a park, um, where you can uh, store your vehicle with the bike tracks and such such. Um, right. If that's what's needed here, uh, the long term drive. Be below that before. Mm -hmm. I don't think the improvements that are happening restrict the ability to do that bike lane here in the future. Um, but uh, but I think that more comprehensive uh, review will be mm -hmm. needed a long time to uh, to that in the So I mean, it would be feasible to put a bike rack in the student lot, take away some student parking spaces and put in a nice big bike rack down there. If kids wanted to bike and just park their bikes down instead of their car. Yeah. You do. I'm talking about in the student parking lot. I mean, I'm just thinking of a place because it's probably easier to bike to the student parking lot than it would be to bike to the back of the building past all the buses and everything. Just
the way I I just thought and was thinking about this is it's trying to myself type out on um, side inch stuff about about internally here uh, within within this main parking area and setting up somewhere within um over in the side area uh sometimes bike racks um towards the front side where they in case you're gonna wanna get closer and ride their bike you know, okay this maybe um uh, I might drive some up along the um adjacent to the parking areas. I think there's also I think that probably makes more sense because like theft is also a concern, especially at a lower lot like that. So mm -hmm. I mean I'm, I'm just I'm not saying that's what we yeah I'm, saying, I'm just saying thinking having been a biker in the city, I can know that like you wanted a bike near somewhere where people saw it regularly. Um and I think but I think to be honest, I think that encouraging biking would first would be making Devon Drive more biker friendly and then the, the the district property itself is probably the secondary issue mm -hmm. like getting people getting 16 17 year olds feeling safe well they'll feel safe getting their parents feeling safe having them on devon drive on a, on a busy time of day um without a dedicated protected bike lane is is, mm -hmm. is probably the bigger hurdle than, than finding the spot for the bike my, my opinion which i'm happy to talk about you can talk about that <laughs> no i agree my daughter would potentially be one of your bikers we live close enough she could do that and i honestly at this point can't imagine sending her down village avenue or elsewhere onto devon drive i mean i think it's lofty to aspire to incorporate multimodal and mm -hmm. and have biking lanes but at this point i think the priority in just getting devon drive safest for the huge number of pedestrians that we have and then taking a a township look comprehensively at how we can start incorporating that um to me it doesn't make sense to have facilities that are bike safe if you can't get to the facility in a you know in a safe manner so i think this is a great starting point for that conversation and i would love to continue having that conversation team bike <laughs> um okay i have another question so um the buses going back behind the school that change of traffic um a lot of people i'm thinking of after school activities or just parking in general in the back of the building will there be because there are some parking spaces currently sort of in the back near the field where people park uh, or even along um the road people park to like go to pick up their kid from practice or kids park there sometimes. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. And, 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 uh, so will then, uh, so traffic will be how will, so on a weekend or an after school, will it, will you still be able to in a car go around to the other side or will you go where the buses go? Okay. We get trained for us to separate those two lots. Only uh, one home can take that train down and be made still. Um, we're working on the on that. Um, so even if we're pretty six year old, we're going to join the desk, we're going to have to move to the back of the equipment. And, and uh, uh, we still have, there's a single way, eight people, years, and we're going to have child play and come again, something to give them back, the and then we have a year of golf work, golf work, that we turn them um, to the field of the different speed. So for anybody to uh, walk on and so they show them out. Young and sit on there. Um and, and the old people who move shot. Mm -hmm. So just so I understand, so if there's so if you're in a car, you'll be able to you will there'll be you'll be able to go either way at the first intersection, right or left. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. 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 So it'll just be bus only when it's bus time. And that's why the figure waiting is going to be. Okay. Kind of people get driving. Okay. 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 Okay
Okay. 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 So this is only going to, it's not going to be open at any time except for emergency purposes. And will there still be a connection to the Lionville Elementary School? That was something in the um, like the county. Control access point the navigation. Okay. Is there a pedestrian way for? I mean, I guess it's pretty close to just walk down the street for a little driveway. Let's say you wanted to. Yeah, mm -hmm. traffic on that. Mm -hmm. On that, all the We plow the road so that they can Mm -hmm. well. um do you have any plans to incorporate any renewable energy you know the township adopted a ready for 100 yeah, I thought we had the building the intersection. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, are there any other comments or questions? Okay. Are the, okay. Um, sorry, I have. Okay. I'll go ahead and open up the comments and questions to the public. Mr. Swimer. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for. The work on this. It really, and I know I've got some information with this, but it, you know, I've been living it out for oh, 40 years. This is the first time that a major push uh, to, to make it pedestrian friendly, data has come about. I, I say thank you, but I also thank you for saying that this would be the beginning because it's not just Devon, it's Whitford, it's Marchwood. And if you do that, then not going to be seen like Rock Township. I think your concern or you wanting to have more bike drivers and walkers. Yeah, no. Ah, if it's safe, if you if you can let your kids come to school without worrying about them uh, crossing over uh, Devon Drive or, or Whitford. So thank you. That's a big change and, and it's taken a long time to do it. It's been really appreciate it. Thank you. And I think it's gonna be very healthy and for, for children, it's going to save kids, and it's going to it's going to make it a lot safer. So, yeah. Um, my question is on, on the school, and I've been looking into this a lot. Uh, and the more I look into it, the more questions I seem to have. And I'm, I'm trying to be, you know, holding this thing up or whatever. And I'm very from education, but I have some concerns about another building on 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 an area that 25 years ago, and the state said it's not big enough for us. And now we're even taking up more acreage with another building. But that's cool news. I understand that. I live with that. Okay. But then I started looking at some of the programs. There's six to over 640 kids in that school right now. Almost one third of the student population have a reduced schedule. They go, like we were saying, three times against five, which is great. That doesn't mean you get students and seniors, they're going to be at a college in, in, in a short time away. And so they, that's not a problem to get them used to that, okay? or to allow them to do that. But I keep asking, and I'm not getting an answer from anybody in the district. Doesn't that uh, decrease the need for classroom space? Um, Mr. Swimmer, I know you brought this up before, and I would suggest that this isn't the forum to ask the school district no, why no. they're putting classrooms Here. for whatever reason. That's definitely a question to be raised at a school board meeting. But if you whatever com whatever comments you have for the pl plan as it is as it pertains to traffic, pedestrian safety, um, the scope of what we have control over, 
then you're welcome to share those. But so don't you have control over building in this township, right? Don't you um, to an extent, to an extent, but we can't make choices about. Yeah. But but not an we don't, and as Mr. Free could explain yeah. more eloquently, but not to a not to an unlimited degree. I mean, we can't make decisions based on things that are outside of. Well, the, what, what the board of supervisors' role is is to determine if the proposal meets the zoning code and the subdivision and land development ordinance. I mean, that's essentially what they're looking at at this point. They're not they're not determining, you know, if if, if the buildings by right. If they have a right to build the building, if they have a right to put this size building for this use in that the fact that maybe it doesn't make sense to have more classrooms, less classrooms, that's not really this body's decision. That That's the school board. Well, I'm that body to, to make it <laughs> look, say, it doesn't, doesn't look right. You know, and, 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 and uh, research is good. Not, okay, I don't accept that. Okay, but... They're spending a lot of money on a building that in, uh, student population is going down, more kids are homeschooled, more kids are doing online, fewer number of children are going into that program, into that school every day. And to build another huge uh, building here doesn't make sense. And I would hope that you would see that and help. I'm assuming you're talking to the school district and not us because I, I, we don't have, yeah, I can't, school district. yeah, so, so, yeah, I just don't want to, I just don't want to take up our meeting time with, with a discussion that can be addressed. Well, I, okay. Someone went to that building, and, and, and it's not the chamber today, but it's not the chamber today, you know, on my feet every day for 24 years, twice a day, which also, impacts on safety because if during that time the, the EMS had to get to certain areas mm -hmm. they would have trouble getting through to get to those halls so not only are we not protect, protected by the sound noise ordinance we're also at risk because they can have it so my question is if they're if you're not going to say to them we won't approve this until we have two emphasis okay then at least get a commitment that after this is done, if there's still traffic jams, then they're not going to wait 23 years to do something. Does that make sense or am I? Uh, yeah, it makes sense. I mean, I think that's why we're asking for the money to be put into escrow mm -hmm. for the traffic study to be done. So that will definitely be done once these improvements have been made to make sure that it doesn't uh, affect the traffic in a way that makes it dangerous. Dangerous. Yeah, exactly. I would say that if you Go ahead. mind, I just point out that um, while they're both on Devon Drive, there's two actual entrances to the campus itself with the student parking as well as the uh, the the driveway to the building itself. So, you know, I, I mean, they both have an entrance point on Devon, so it may not be ideal in terms of what Mr. Schleiber is referring to. There are two entrances if you really want to, you know, look at that. Um, and so I'm not sure if that I, I, I just, just want to point out that, I mean, does, that does. I know, and I've been in, in the traffic, I know what you mean. Yeah, so I'm not, you know, I'm not I'm <laughs> we've all, all three of us have dealt with it. Yeah. Well, that, that makes me think of another question that I had just because I'm not sure if I can envision it, but right now on Devon Drive in the morning when the traffic's backed up, the there's that painted um, striping where before you can turn left and the, that left-hand turn lane gets so backed up that people go around and sort of go on that striping. Yeah. So that's, that's not, is that gonna be raised now or no, that's still gonna just be striping? Do you know what I'm talking about? Am I explaining myself? Yeah, that was okay, saying. so that's that has doesn't change at all. Okay. Um. And that was another question I had too. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, when did he raise? Uh, because that would have a tremendous impact, not just on the school, right? But you know, five or seven on Devon Drive. Mm -hmm. It's unbelievable. It's nonstop, and they're not residents of the Bunch Mm-hmm. They're cutting through. 
So we don't want to make it so it encourages them to do that. We want to make it safer for our kids to use that name over it. Yeah. You want people to ride their bikes. You can't ride your bike between five and seven mm -hmm. with all the traffic on what you done. So what can you do about it? You can put raised crosswalks and people will start to say, maybe I'll use 113 and 100 instead of stopping for those crosses. Just a thought. Um. Well, I mean, I the think way they're designed today, by the way, it's not like the ones that took out your muffler like 20 years ago. Yeah. It's a wide, soft, the EMT certified tourism service can be right on. I, I'm personally a fan of the raised crosswalks. Did we talk did we talk about that at all during the planning commission? And uh, yeah, go ahead. There will be in the median, not the entire mm -hmm. uh, where the crosswalk or cross, you know, where the the ADA requires the there's no young home of concrete. So, like curved mm -hmm. concrete. So, there, it's not going to extend the entire area. Like, there's no be, it'll act kind of like a angel. There'll definitely be in the middle of the, something south in the middle of the street. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Wait, the island, yeah. yeah. Physical concrete here. Mm -hmm. yeah. With the flash, are, are both of them out? What are these little squares on the island that I'm seeing that look like TVs? That's yeah. Pedestrian crossing. Oh, pedestrian crossing signs. Okay. Um, yeah. You can see the strip, but that will be a concrete on this area. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It will slow people down. Yeah, I, I do think that will slow people down. But as far as the raised crosswalks, we didn't. That wasn't ever discussed at the planning commission or in with internal. Because because the humps would make the stormwater change. Can you talk about that, Dan? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, this, uh, doing raised crosswalks here does extra water and and the flow. You have to. There's the design methods to, to work around that, but that is something that does come into play here. Uh, you have to evaluate for, for that process. Mm -hmm. I mean, I see, I see it all in townships all around us. They, you know, why don't we do it? Um, and it does have an impact on traffic. Oh, okay. I think it's important to point out too that this conversation on traffic with this plan has started and it will continue, especially as we look at a traffic study in the future. And I think that once we have these improvements in, which I understand is sooner than later, which is a great, you know, a great thing, um, we can revisit and see what's working and see how the circulation pattern is preventing buses from stacking up and continue the conversation from there. It's certainly not the end tonight. Right. I, I think it, I really, really reiterate that because I agree. Like this is, I think this is a massive improvement on the safety. And when I look at the LYA. On, on the weekends and, and the parents crossing, I'm going to sleep better yeah. knowing that there's a much more defined crossing. And, and and I know people coming over that hill don't even stop at that. And I think this is now going to be a situation where that's that's alleviated. Is this you know going to achieve everyone's goals all at once? Obviously not, but I think this is a massive improvement. I'm pretty positive about it. But if we continue to see problems, if there's continue to be concerns, we can revisit some of this later. Um, and and see if there's other problems. I, I think specifically with the biking that you brought mm -hmm. up earlier is something that we should probably think about on a more holistic way. Now, unfortunately, we don't have control of Whitford, but we have control of many all the other roads in the neighborhood that I mm -hmm. uh, that come in, at least from that direction. And I think we should think about how do we how do we encourage if if we want to encourage biking to school, then you know mm -hmm. we, we're we're a big part of that in in terms of the neighborhood and. You know, that might also, we could also think about that in conjunction of Concord and Devon and some of the other bigger roads. Do we narrow them, mm -hmm. put, you know, dedicated bike lanes in? Um, what implication does that have for road care, especially maintenance in the week, winters, things like that? These are these are pretty complicated conversations, but I think we can, this is all part feeding into the school. And I mean, this, we're talking about them from now on. It's a great direction to go. That's why I commend them for the supervisors can do this. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Okay, actually, I have one last comment. I 
the county in the county review letter they did um, suggest adding a si pedestrian sidewalk between the um, elementary school and the high school because a lot of times kids having kids that went to both schools you know they're elementary students sometimes there's programs where the high schoolers come and volunteer at the elementary school after school or vice versa they take the elementary students to see something cool at the high school um would you consider adding a sidewalk there to connect the two schools I think we're going to this is mm -hmm. not open for, for group traffic. So when we're out of here, the, the the students can walk on the pavement. So since it's not, it's, it's, it's an emergency purposes only. Mm -hmm. And then there's a sidewalk that actually starts at the entrance on the on the, on the high school side. Where? Um, right. I, th I think it's right as you go on the, along the tennis tennis court. Um, I. I I, was just I just think it would be nice to have a sidewalk connecting. Like, why right, I, I make right. kids walk in the road or the, the parking lot? So you see where the just the, add a sidewalk. Yeah. I'm just saying that there is a there's where. One. Where's the first? If you're coming from the elementary school, when when do your feet land on a sidewalk to get into the school? I believe it's behind that parking. Lot. I'm asking them. <laughs> it's like right along the main. Has that been considered? Yeah. Oh, other than purpose surfaces. Yeah. So, so they, they have that property spell. They have to move if they want to go over here and they're seeing that a waiver or variance. Yeah, I, I don't think it's a waiver. I think it's a variance. Yeah, so I don't have any control over that. You know, that's what I'm saying. Isn't it already impervious because it's blacktop? You can't just cut out some for. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're going from our chair, you're just don't reach. You can gaggle a kid. There's the park. I'm sorry, what was that? Well, things in front of that store here, which I don't know what kind of time frame that is. Probably in a month, I'll be back in summer. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm not going to forget. So just saying. Hey, do, you, do you have to go? Do you need variances for that other piece? All right, so then, so as long as you're going there, you could add it in. Okay. So hearing more, they're not coming to right now. They're max. They're at their max impervious yeah. coverage allowed. Yeah. yeah. So in order to do any improvements at Lionville Elementary, they're going to need to get a variance to exceed the impervious coverage from the zoning hearing from the zoning hearing board. So at that time, they can incorporate the additional impervious coverage with that sidewalk area. Okay. I'll make sure. I'm just doing that during the. Okay. Right. Sounds good. Are there any other comments or questions from the public from the board? All right. So we have a motion to approve resolution 2023-10. The preliminary final land development plan for downtown high school east uh i will take a vote all in favor aye aye, aye. The ayes have it all opposed nobody right okay. that's it um okay i'm gonna go ahead and run through the announcements and then we'll open the meeting to public comment and questions do i have to read through the announcements yeah. i'm actually not going to read through the announcements do i have to it's too long. <laughs> yeah, it's late. You guys can read them online. Everybody wants to go home now. I'm just going to open up the meeting to public comments. 
Are there any unrelated comments? Anything that we've already talked about? Nope. All right, then I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Have a good night, everybody.